long, long time ago, in a galaxy far, 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 far away, something resulted in an extremely bright flash that we observed relatively recently. Something that the scientists now believe was a collision between two different black holes. Hello, wonderful person. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most unusual, well, actually no, the most unusual black hole collision we've ever detected that not only involved two black holes we didn't think could possibly exist, but also resulted in some strange unusual effects we have never observed before. At the same time, the product of this collision was the first ever confirmed and detected intermediate mass black hole. And now that we know these giants exist, we can actually start hypothesizing about a lot of other black holes out there. But let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. Back in May of 2019, the detection of unusual gravitational waves by LIGO detector suggested that something massive once again collided with something else. But then another detector known as ZTF or Zwicky Transient Facility was able to see unusual light coming from this direction as well. At first it didn't really make sense, but the scientists detecting this started to hypothesize that maybe what we were observing was basically a collision of two black holes orbiting around another supermassive black hole and the actual flash came from the disruption of the black hole as it moved through the accretion disk of the larger supermassive black hole. In other words, the scientists started to think that maybe we just observed the tremendously powerful explosion as a slightly less massive black hole passed through the accretion disk. And if so, the scientists also hypothesized we should be able to see it again in December of 2020 as it passes through the accretion disk again. But now the scientists recently were also able to analyze the masses of these two black holes and discovered that, well, they don't really make sense. The mass of these two black holes is, as you can see, 85 and 66 masses of the Sun, resulting in the total mass of 142 masses of the Sun. This of course means that, first of all, it created the mysterious and never-before-seen intermediate mass black hole that we only suspected existed based on some other observations, and at the same time, we now know that these so-called impossible mass black holes can exist as well. And the reason they're called impossible mass black holes is for a relatively simple reason. There's a limit to a star mass before it starts experiencing very unusual effects and is no longer capable of producing black holes. You can find more about this in another video that I made previously that should be popping up somewhere above my head, but in a nutshell, the star of a mass of about 130 masses of the Sun up to about 250 masses of the Sun goes through something we refer to as pair instability supernova, which actually leaves absolutely nothing behind. So there's actually a gap to how massive certain black holes can get. We always believe that there shouldn't really be any black holes, smaller black holes out there over a mass of about 65 masses of the Sun. But now you can kind of see that 66 and even 85 seems to be possible. And if a star produced these two black holes, it would be falling into that pair instability mass and should really not be producing black holes. So that's sort of the paradox right now. Now, if a star is even more massive than 250 masses of the Sun, like for example, the famous R136A1 located in the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud, the supernova from this star would also most likely produce a really massive black hole. But at this point, it would sort of be an intermediate mass black hole. At least that's the theory behind this. We don't entirely know what happens to these larger stars, but we think that they do produce black holes too. But that's not really the point right now. The point is that this single event produced three very, very unusual observations. We were able to detect black holes we never thought existed. We were able to detect the first ever confirmed intermediate mass black hole. And we even saw some kind of a strange flash coming from the vicinity of this region as well. All of this right now doesn't make sense, but I'm sure we'll be able to explain this in the next few months or so. And just to give you a little bit more reference, here's what some of the other detections look like so far. And you can see that we've detected quite a lot of different neutron stars, which usually have a mass between one and two masses of the sun. We've also seen quite a lot of smaller black holes. And here was the limit of some of the larger ones we've seen. 
but now we've seen this really really massive one which is really the most exciting and the most unusual of them all. Now, if it actually did happen very, very close to the supermassive black hole, where we believe a lot of these black hole collisions happened to begin with, one possible explanation to how these black holes gain their mass that's not technically possible is because they collided with something else previously. Assuming that this is in the supermassive black hole region, and assuming that there are a lot of black holes orbiting around the supermassive black hole, they should have been colliding with one another for many, many billions of years. That's not something we think is unusual. However, it's not certain. And the other explanation here that actually relates to another video I made previously is in regards to the exotic geode objects, and I'm sure that the study about this is going to come out in the next few months. If you haven't seen this video, it's a video in regards to these exotic objects we refer to as geodes, the objects that are also responsible for the accelerated expansion of the universe, the objects that could also have been the culprits of this collision, because a collision between two geodes would be more or less unusual in terms of mass, it would actually be very close to what we've detected, at the same time it could possibly produce a flash of energy, and most importantly, the unusual mass observation can easily be explained by the fact that this is a very very distant explosion around 17 billion light years away from us when the universe was about 5 billion years younger. During that period, a typical geode would actually acquire mass making it around 60 to 80 masses of the sun. Now, that's not something I'm going to be covering more in this video because this is sort of still theoretical and quite hypothetical and we have no proof that geodes exist either. But in some of the future videos we might explore this a little bit more. So let's get back into the facts. There is actually another unusual thing about this particular detection and that's the actual sort of pitch that it created. Normally, if you've seen some of the other black hole collisions, you may know that black hole collisions seem to produce the so-called black hole chirp. It sort of looks and sounds like this. Now, these chirps are pretty common with all of the black hole collisions, but that's not what was produced here at all. As a matter of fact, when the scientists behind the study recreated the same type of a sound when these two black holes collided, which only lasted for like one tenth of a second, the resulting sound was described as a thud, almost as if something really really heavy just fell onto the floor. Now that's what makes this very unusual. It's sort of not what we expected at all, and it also sort of currently is difficult to explain. Which means that you can definitely expect a lot of follow-ups to this particular detection in some of the future videos. But the last unusual and somewhat mind-blowing discovery about this particular collision is the amount of energy that was released as the gravitational waves when these two black holes collided. Ok, let me try to help you imagine all of this. When a supernova occurs, when a very very large and very massive star goes supernova, most of its mass normally ends up being completely redistributed across the galaxy. Only a very very small fraction of the star releases the energy itself. The amount of energy released here is normally equivalent to the total energy our sun is going to produce through its lifetime. So it's a lot, but it's not even close to how much energy is produced when these black holes collide. So when these two black holes collided, they released a total of about 8 to possibly even 9 masses of the sun in energy. In terms of pure energy release, that's about 10 to maybe even 100,000 times higher than a typical supernova. But obviously this energy is not visible, this is gravitational energy. Which is something that is difficult for us to imagine because we're not really able to think that way. Nevertheless, because we were also able to observe visual effects, maybe this also creates some other unusual effects we never thought of before. But all of this will be most likely discussed further in the future, most likely after December of 2020, when the scientists are able to prove or disprove if this particular flash was created when the black holes passed through the accretion disk. And so for now, we are left with a lot of questions, only some answers. It's a great observation, it's definitely something that the scientists were hoping to find, it's an incredible new observation, and it's surprisingly something the scientists thought they're not going to be able to see for decades. But we just did, only after about 5 or so years of operation of the LIGO detector. 
which of course also means that we're going to be able to see a lot more unusual and strange and predictable things in the coming years. But for now that's kind of all we know about this particular event. You can learn more about this either from the study in the description below or from the LIGO article that I'm also posting there as well. Both of them do a pretty good job thoroughly describing the exact observation, but obviously no actual answers just yet. So once we do have some answers, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below, or by joining the wonderful Patreon membership all of which are also in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.